Howdy from Texas, this is Heath Hipple with Bugs Fishing. I'm gonna teach you how to tie the curl tail jig today. Um, why would you wanna tie a curl tail jig? Who cares? This is why. Uh, this is one of the two first jigs I ever released. I released it back in 2010 and I've been fishing it since 2009. So I've had some good history with it. In my opinion, if you're in shallow water, you know, mid thigh and shallower from Texas over to Mississippi, um, you can't do better for redfish or flounder with this jig. Um, I'd put it up against anything. And so and it's pretty simple to tie. Um, it's a good one if you're just starting out. It um, doesn't take very long. If you're experienced tire, you can knock several out pretty quickly. Um, but it's very effective for redfish and flounder in shallow water. Um, I also uh, pick up trout when they're in shallow water. Sheep's head, black drum occasionally. Had a customer catch a tarpon. A lot of people bass fish with it, so it's a versatile jig, but very effective for redfish and flounder. So I'll teach you. Okay, we're gonna be tying a curl tail jig, and I've already put the screw lock onto the hook shank and pushed it all the way, pushed the tag in all the way up against the head. And so I'm going to start the thread there and Secure that screw lock. Cut the little tag. Bring it back almost there. Tie it a half inch. Now, on this side, this is the black gold color, and the black gold color features. Uh, zonker strips one inch long on either side and so this color is called black barred gold variant and I'm going to tie that in parallel to the hook shank right up tight to the head and you'll see the first wraps I make I leave a little I leave a little tag end see that right there I leave a little tag in and in my mind that will keep it from slipping out and when I secure rabbit I like to uh, like I said leave that little tag in I'm gonna do a four turn whip finish knot and in my mind it's quicker and easier than a couple of half hitches and more effective and so I turn it over I'm gonna tie the other one inch long zonker strip same color on this side same thing parallel to the hook shank, leave that little tag, make some good thread wraps there, same thing over here, four turn, whip finish knot. Okay, so that's, those are the sides, See, on either side parallel to the hook shank. Okay, the top is a magnum rabbit strip so that means it's wider than the zonker and if you can see here I've, I've cut about a quarter inch slit in that rabbit strip and that is so it can slip over the hook point and I've cut it that long it's like a quarter maybe even closer to a half I've cut it that long so it can slip on and off and so I can replace the grub and you'll see that at the end and so I'm going to start, so I'm going to pierce the, that rabbit strip with the hook. I've got to take it out of the vise temporarily. Push it back down. Put it back in there. Find the sweet spot in the jaws so that, here we go, it's not going anywhere. Okay, so the top rabbit strip is going to be tied right on top. Okay, same deal. I'm gonna leave a little tag, and that tag is gonna serve two purposes. And I'll show you that in a minute. And same thing, four turns, one, two, three, four. This will secure that. And in my mind, um, if you're going to the trouble to tie one of these, and you're gonna fish it in salt water, salt water is a tough environment, um, let's make it last. So, on a curl tail jig, I put two colors of flash and this is called this is crystal flash and on this 
this one we're going to use gold. We're going to use three pieces of crystal flash and gold, and we're going to use three pieces of crystal flash and UV tan. Um, this reflects UV light. Um, the thinking is if it will, you know, shine a little bit different or a little bit brighter, make it easier for fish to see. And so I'm going to cut three pieces pretty close to the tie of each. I'm going to set that down and cut three pieces of my gold. Alright, now I'm going to line up the ends together. So I've got three pieces of gold and three pieces of UV tan. Okay. So you see there's a zonker strip right there and the, the top strip right there. I'm going to put these three pieces right in the middle, okay, and I'm going to have them extend, you know, right to the end of the zonker and the top strip. I'm going to hold it there and I'm going to secure them with thread, one, two, a few wraps like that, okay, half hitch. Now that tag in front is going to guide is going to guide those pieces around. I'll let you see that right there. So they're sitting right in there. And I'm going to rotate a little bit further back to me. So I'm going to secure them with thread. They're around that tag so they're not going to slip off. And as I, I'm, I'm holding them in place with my left fingers here and securing them with thread. Okay. I'm going to cut the excess. So it's about the same length as the other side. So we're good there. Now I'm going to do, I'm going to make more thread wraps here to kind of cover up those ends. Not the ends, the where I, I put the, those pieces of crystal flash around. And I'm going to do a, like a seven turn whip finish knot here. And that will complete this part of it. One. Okay, crank on that pretty tight. Cut it. Okay, now it's time to do the weed guard. I'm using 30 pound mason. And I'm gonna cut, I'm gonna cut one piece. So you can kind of measure it here. That's where it's gonna go. I'm gonna double that, cut it. We can trim any excess when we're done. So hold it like, hold it like this it in the middle okay so I, I get it uh, I'll move the head right there because I'm going to tie in those pieces I'm going to tie in the pieces right right here so I'm going to start the thread there Okay, rule of thumb here, when you're tying in like pieces of mono like this, if you do three or four wraps, one, two, three, four, and I'm holding it with my off hand so it'll kind of stay in place. Three or four wraps will kind of make that stay in place. And so I'm going to kind of hold it there and I'm going to make a couple more. There you go. Now I can hold it with my left hand. And you see before I tighten it up, I'm going to make sure that those are still kind of even. So I'm going to start securing those a little bit better all the way down there. Okay, so those are, it's kind of in line with that, with the jig portion of the hook, like leading past the eye. They're straight going that way. And uh, now I'm going to put a couple of whip finishes in there, like kind of 
kind of a three turn at the bottom. Three turn in the middle. Oops. And then a you know, three or four turn at the top. Okay. So those aren't going anywhere. And now I'm going to take it out of the vise and put it in straight again. Make sure I've got it. There we go. It's not going anywhere. Okay. So I already know that this is too long. I want it, I want it to be about right here. So I'm going to cut off the excess. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to hold it down with my fingers right here. And I'm going to start making thread wraps right here. I'm going to make quite a few. Put in a half hitch. Right now it's hooked under there. But I'm starting to get them in the right place. So push down. I want them to come down a little further. I'm getting close another half hitch like half hitches let you kind of save your work so the thread didn't come unraveled okay almost got them okay that's looking good right there quick finish my eyes okay okay that looks good Cut that. Okay. Now I'm going to use it's called hard as hull head cement. I'm going to put that on the thread wraps, both of the weed guard and uh, the thread wraps where we did the finishing touches on the on the lure. Okay. Looking at the weed guard there, they're crossed right there. It doesn't really matter, um, but if you don't like that, you can just pull them apart and they'll look like they're supposed to. So we have, you got a zonker strip right here, a zonker strip on the bottom. You've got your flash on either side and the magnum strip on top. And as soon as this dries, we'll put on the grub and we'll be done. So congratulations, you've tied a curl tail jig. Now I'm gonna show you how to put the grub on. You cut that top slit in the top piece of rabbit and so when you take it off the hook point so you don't pull those hairs through you pull it down and you, I still got put some hairs through there but they'll they'll go out okay so peel everything back okay so now you're ready when the when your bug is at rest on the bottom you want the the, the grub the curl to be up so it'll kind of flutter and so I put it on my hand like this to orientate it the correct way and I'm gonna put it on backwards but when, when you bring it around you'll see uh, you'll see that's in the right spot so push down you're gonna go about a half inch okay and you're gonna push it up onto the screw lock once twice now you're good to go and if you see what I was talking about the the grub portion is in line with the hook so you put the uh, top piece of rabbit back over kind of smooth everything back smooth everything back down and so it'll sit so it'll sit like this on the bottom if you want to sight cast with it and this you know the tail will kind of flutter and you'll get a lot of movement out of the rabbit but now it's ready to fish. So congratulations on tying your curl tail jig. I've also, I get questions often, how do I work the jig? How do I fish it? Um, what I like to do in shallow water is to make, you know, make as long as a cast as I can and then give it some jigging action as I'm bringing it in to keep it out of the grass or off the bottom. That's what I do when I'm blind casting. Sight casting, you can swim it past a redfish or you can just drop it to the bottom um, you'll get. It will always land hook point up, 
and there will be lots of movement both from the, the top and the side pieces of rabbit and then the grub. If you've installed the grub correctly, it'll kind of flutter. So it will just sit there and look alive. Um, the other thing that's very effective and popular for people to do is to just scoot it, just scoot it along the bottom by just giving, just twitching it slightly with your rod. This head, as it scoots along the bottom, it'll tend to kick up a little puff of sand or mud. It'll look like something, you know, a little bit, uh, crab or shrimp trying to scurry scurry away and you know the redfish should have eaten it by now doing one of those three things you know swimming it just dropping it in front of them or scooting it along the bottom um, the the head design uh, in addition to making it land hook point up it will also uh, not sink as fast as other jig heads and so you know you can comfortably cast it as long as you you know as far as you can knee deep water even shallower and you'll be able to keep it uh, keep it off the bottom out of the grass um, because it doesn't sink as quickly but um, you know this is a it's what I call a redfish finder um, if you if you can't sight cast with it and you're just blind casting the fishy water it will help you find redfish